How you doing guys? Big Mac Dance Girl here, back once again with another Conquest tutorial mission for you. It's time for tutorial replay mission 13. Mission 13 is secure the deck and it's all about objectives. Um, it, there's an objective at either end of the battlefield just uh, near the deployment zones and uh, we're learning a few new things in this mission as well so we're going to be using morale checks for the first time, morale tests rather not checks um, and we also have a, a few extra terrain rules. Uh, we've got the fuel dump terrain rule which when a unit is behind it, within one inch of it, they gain a plus one to their cover save. However, on a roll of a seven plus, so basically if you roll a six on a dice for your cover save, uh, then you add one for the terrain as well. So if you roll a six, it, one of the barrels explodes basically, and it causes a mortal wound to the unit. And then there's the ammo dump as well. Now there's a couple of things about the ammo dump. Uh, you get a plus one to your cover save when you're behind it. Uh, the ammo dump are basically the little boxes and the fuel dump is the barrels. Um, you'll, you'll notice in the mission as well, I've separated the boxes and the barrels to make it easier to remember which rules are going to apply in which situation rather than the terrain, the way they have it laid out in the magazine. They have a barrel with some boxes like in three different places on the battlefield. So I've just made it simple by putting all the barrels together and all the boxes together. Um, yeah, so the ammo dump rules. With it, if you've got a model within one inch, you get a plus one to your cover save. But any model that's firing and is within two inches of it gets to re-roll ones for their hit rolls. It's like they've got an endless supply of ammo, so they get to take another shot kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, extra rules we've got. We've also got no no fear for space marines because we're using morale tests now. And they shall know no fear. Space marine units can re-roll failed morale tests. Interesting thing about this mission is despite the fact that we've got morale tests for the first time, the space marines can't really fail the morale tests because they don't have units big enough to fail the morale tests because the they space marines on the data sheets they've got a leadership value of 8 for the standard marines and 9 for the sergeants and because of that they only have units of 3 at the minute the space marines so if you lose a model or two models from that unit even the way you do morale test is you roll a d6 and then you add the number of models you've lost in your turn uh, to that roll so the maximum roll you're going to get is 8 but if you roll higher than your leadership value so your d6 you roll 6 and then you've lost say five models then you'd add five to that so then that would be a total of 11 that would be higher than your leadership so you would fail that morale test however the maximum a space marine can actually roll in this mission is eight anyway because if you kill three models so if you kill two models and there's one model left in the unit that you've got to take a morale test for, then the maximum roll you're going to get is eight because you add the two models that have been, been killed to the six of the dice roll um, and then that gives you a total of eight. But the, that means that it, they can't fail a morale test to Space Marines because if all three models are wiped out of the unit they don't need to take a morale test anyway. But uh, it does still get you used to taking those morale tests and rolling for morale. Um, yeah, it's just interesting that one side might fail morale and one side definitely won't fail morale. The other interesting thing as well, the Poxwalkers don't take morale tests and they're one of the units that would suffer from uh, morale tests more because they're more likely to use high number, lose high numbers rather, in a turn. Um, so yeah, we get new rules that are kind of almost useless at this stage, but I think it's more to get us, because we're in the tutorial mission still, it's more to get us used to the different phases of the game. Uh, yes, the mission itself, the players involved are a Mephitic Blight Hauler, 12 Poxwalkers, and 5 
Plague Marines. Uh, and on the Space Marine side, we have the Primaris Librarian, three Intercessors and three Aggressors. You win by accruing victory points. Uh, each enemy unit you remove from play gains you one victory point. If you control your own objective marker, so like I said earlier, there's an objective marker in each deployment zone. If you control your own objective marker, you gain one victory point. And if you control the opponent's objective marker, you gain three victory points. And uh, that's pretty much everything you need to know. Um, yeah, so let me know in the comments below. Who do you think is going to be victorious this time? Is the Mephitic Black Hauler going to make all the difference for the Death Guard? Or are the Space Marine Aggressors going to be too strong an enemy for all these Poxwalkers and Plague Marines to face? Let me know what you think in the comments below. So you can see laid out in front of you guys, we have the battlefield. And uh, I flipped it over to the other side just for a change. It's the same thing, and I put the containers in the same place. Uh, one thing you'll notice though, we've got some new rules this mission for cover. Uh, we've got the rules for cover for the ammo containers. If you're obscured by them, you get a plus one to your cover save. Or to your saving throw rather, um, and if you're within, you have to be within one inch of them to benefit from that. Uh, but if you're within two inches of them when you're shooting, uh, so let's say a plague marine is just here and he's shooting, he gets to re-roll failed hit rolls of one. Um, so it makes you extra accurate on your shooting. And the barrels I put in the middle, um, I put what, what I've done, I put them all together because they've got different rules. So I thought I'd just chuck some barrels in the middle and ammo crates here because that's an ammo dump and that's um, fuel barrels or something it's called. I can't remember exactly. Okay, so what it is, it basically if you roll a 6, uh, the rule says if you roll a 7 plus, you, uh, you suffer a mortal wound. Um, if you, so you roll a 6 for your saving throw basically because if you roll a 6, the barrels give you plus 1 so it becomes a 7 plus. Um, however, the interesting thing there is, if your enemy has a, the, the person shooting you, if they have a, an armour penetration value on the weapons they're shooting you with, so let's say the intercessors there have uh, the bolt rifles which have minus one armour penetration, then you can't actually roll a 7 plus, so um, that's an interesting little thought there for you, it's, uh, it's less beneficial if the intercessors are shooting at someone behind the barrels than if some of the others without any armor penetration value are shooting at people in cover behind the barrels. Anyway, back to the mission. Uh, you'll see I've got the data sheets spread out across the table. Uh, Death Guard ones over here. In this mission we have a Mephitic Blight Hauler. We have five Plague Marines. We have 12 Pox Walkers on the Death Guard side. Over on the Imperial Fist side we have three Aggressors, a Primaris Librarian and three Intercessors. Um, the, at least on the Death Guard side, it's getting quite big and quite busy now, I feel like. Um, and the Imperial Fists, they've got fewer models, but still plenty of wounds in there as well. Uh, the Primaris Librarian has five wounds, even though he's only a single model. The Intercessors obviously have two wounds apiece. And um, the Gravis, the Aggressors, have two wounds apiece as well. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's crack on with the mission. It's an objective-based mission. Um, well, it's not just an objective-based mission. Each unit you kill, you get a victory point. If you secure an objective for a turn, you get a victory point as well. So you can tick up, uh, keep that clock ticking over. Um, if you secure your, your own objective, so the Death Guard, Death Guard secure this objective for a turn, they get one victory point. But if they the Death Guard secure their opponent's objective, they get three victory points instead of one. Um, and the way you secure the objective is have more models within three inches of it than the enemy does. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much everything. I might as well now crack on with the roles to see who deploys first. And then uh, we'll see who goes first. This mission I'm probably going to film a little bit differently because we've got the morale phase in this mission. So I'm not going to quite film in the same way because there's another phase now to remember. I'm going to be a little bit more, I, I'm less likely to show you the movement phase for example and the charge phase and stuff like that. So uh, the green dice represent death guard and the pearlescent dice are the imperial fist. Let's see who deploys first. It's a draw. It's quite often a draw recently. That's strange. It is the death guard will deploy first. 
I'll come back after deployment and then I'll roll to see who goes first. So you can see the both sides have deployed as follows. The Poxwalkers deployed first over here. I thought I'd keep them near this objective and then it's going to be really hard for the Imperial Fist to shift them off and win that objective at any point. Uh, the Death Guard, uh, sorry, the Imperial Fist then deployed the Aggressors because the Aggressors can then try and make the way down to the other end of the battlefield and clear those Poxwalkers off. The Death Guard Plague Marines deployed next in the middle. Um, they can move up the centre of the battlefield and take on anything coming the other way potentially, so perhaps the Aggressors, if the Aggressors do try and take out those Poxwalkers. And then I deployed these three guys here, the Intercessors, in order to try and keep that objective secure for the Imperial Fists. The Mephitic Blight Hauler took up the last deployment deployment slot, uh, deployment spot rather, and then the Primaris Librarian for the Imperial Fists took up the central one there. Uh, yes, let's crack on with the roll to see who's going to be going first. It's the Imperial Fist will choose who goes first. Uh, as the Imperial Fist player, I'm going to let the Death Guard go first. So, for the Death Guard movement, I've moved the Plague Marines up here, actually. I was thinking about sending them to do with the Aggressors, but I thought, you know what, I'm sending them for the Mephitic Blight Hauler over there instead. And uh, the Plague Marines can come over here and try and take a few shots at the Intercessors there. Uh, I'm going to go on to the shooting phase now, and uh, I'll come back and let you know how I got on in that phase. So, just summarising quickly what the Plague Marines have done, they all shot into these Intercessors here, only managing to take one wound. Uh, the guy with the plasma gun, uh, the squad leader, took that wound off of the uh, Space Marine with a supercharged plasma gun shot. Um, unfortunately, these guys at the back couldn't benefit from that reroll of one to, uh, to the shooting attacks because they're not within two inches of these ammo crates. So if, if they had had that reroll, they could have done some more damage and probably taken out another fella. And uh, the guy with the bolt gun, he managed to hit the guy twice, but... Unfortunately, it didn't cause a wound, or he only caused one wound, and then it was saved by the Space Marine anyway. So I'll move over to the Blight Hall and out, targeting the aggressors. I've got a slight conundrum here. I'm not entirely sure of the rules. Maybe you can fill me in in the comments below. So the Multi Melter took out the first aggressor, basically. Now, he can no longer draw a line of sight to these guys, but he's got other weapons to fire. Would those weapons have been considered to have fired all at the same time? target the enemy all at the same time so they'd be able to see him or not on this occasion it makes sense in my head that the aggressor has been taken out so he can't target the aggressors now because he can't draw a line of sight to them anymore so he can't target them with the other weapons um, so I'm not going to target any of the aggressors anymore what I'll do now is target these guys over here this mephitic blight hauler is deadly um, he's just taken out two of the intercessors with shooting there and um, the he, he rolled fives and sixes for his hit rolls and then he rolled fives and sixes for his wound rolls and uh, he's got still got the missile launcher shots to take um, I'm not sure whether to do frag or crack missiles um, He's got less chance of hitting with the crack missiles, but you know what, I'm going to do frag missiles just in case, uh, give him more chance of hitting. So it's going to be D6 hits. Oh, it's only one hit, I should have gone crack. Uh, he's going to be hitting on force. Fails to hit anyway, no problem. So uh, that's the end of the Death Guard first turn. It's not looking good for the Imperial Fist, is it? I'll come back after Imperial Fist movement. I've just moved the aggressors up there, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that stand. But one thing I forgot was the morale phase for this guy. Uh, they lost two miniatures, so I'm going to roll a dice now and then add that to add two to that and then compare it to the unit's morale. Uh, it's one, so that's three, and the unit's morale is nine, I think, for the sergeant. Let me just double check that. Um, Yep, the Intercessor Squad Sergeant has a leadership of nine, so there's no chance he's running away there. Uh, I think in a squad of three, you can't actually fail a morale test as a, as a Space Marine player. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you can, because you can lose maximum of two models, and your roll is going to be maximum six, meaning as long as your Sergeant's still alive, you're, you're passing your morale test, and I think you pass it even if you equal your leadership characteristic so you can't fail really um but yeah that's just the 
one of the new rules for this mission is morale so and the new phase for this mission is morale so i needed to make sure need to make sure i get into the habit of doing that it's another new rule new phase for me to remember this is a battlefield after imperial fist movement in turn one uh, the aggressors moved up here the primaris librarian followed him and the intercessor moved over there with them as well uh, i'm going to do the sidekick phase now i might as well do this live on camera to see if it has any interesting results. Uh, I'm going to cast Smite first, the Librarian, onto the Mephitic Blight Hauler. It's Psychic, um, it's a Warp Charge 5 power, so I need to roll 5 or more with the 2 dice. Uh, that's a 7, so he gets that off. He gets D3 Mortal Wounds on the Blight Hauler now. That is uh, 2 Mortal Wounds, and the Blight Hauler gets Disgustingly Resilient. For that, so he rolls five or more, he saves those wounds. Well, he saves one of them, so he loses one wound there. Uh, the Black Hauler has eight wounds in total, so now he's on seven wounds. What I'm going to do is just stick them there to remind me he's, uh, he's taken a wound, basically. Um, so now the Primaris Librarian is going to roll another Psychic Power. Going to roll for another psychic power rather uh, and this time it's going to be might of heroes uh, might of heroes warp charge value is six it manifested select an adeptus status model within 12 inches of you within 12 inches until the start of your next psychic phase add one to the model's strength and toughness characteristic and attacks so we are going to now roll for that i'm going to get six or more Oh, that's a cock dice. Unfortunately, I cannot accept that as a six. So we need a four or more with this dice. It's a four. Perfectly cast. Um, so uh, the unit I'm targeting is, or the model I'm targeting rather, is a sergeant in this unit here, just to give him an extra attack, extra strength and stuff like that. I just put all my shooting into the Mephitic Blight Hauler. Uh, the intercessor missed with both of his shots. The Librarian missed with his shot, and guess what? <laughs> These guys only rolled eight, eight hits onto the Mephitic Black Hauler with the Flamestorm Gauntlets. Uh, the Flamestorm Gauntlets are strength four, and the Mephitic Black Hauler's toughness is seven, so they're gonna be wounding on fives. Uh, let's grab four more dice, and then I'll come back with the wound rolls. Or rather, I'll just do the wound, wound rolls here for you. So they need fives to wound. Uh, they got three wounds there. The Mephitic Black Hauler has a three plus save. So it's three, three pluses required. One failed. Uh, let me check the Flamestorm Gauntlet again. No, I was just double checking the Flamestorm Gauntlet didn't have any AP. So one three plus save failed and it's a disgusting resilient. Now he needs a five or six or he loses another wound. It's a three, so he does lose another wound. He's down to six. Going to reveal that Kiblam symbol on that dice there to represent that he's got six wounds remain remaining. On to the combat phase now. Uh, the aggressors are going to try and charge this fella here, this Blight Hauler. So he's going to shoot Overwatch, of course. I'll come back with the results of the Overwatch and charge roll for you. It was a five inch charge for the aggressors and they made it with a roll of six. Uh, the Primaris Librarian is going to charge now as well so they try and strip as many wounds off this Blight Hauler and take him out of action as quickly as possible. Um, so the Librarian is going to charge, it's an eight inch charge. Uh, let's see if he can make it. He fails to make it. Um, so the Librarian is going to stay there and I'll come back after the first lot of attacks in combat. Change my mind slightly, I'm going to roll these on camera for you. Six attacks in total because of the extra attack provided by the Librarian's Psychic Power. Um, and I'm going to roll to see if they can hit. They're going to be hitting on fours because the Flamestorm Gauntlets are big chunky weapons that are hard to use. Uh, that is one, two hits. Only two hits. That is a bit disappointing there for the Imperial Fists. However, they will be wounding on threes. One wounds, one fails to wound. It is a D3 damage weapon, and it's a minus 3 AP. Um, so I'll roll the save first. It's going to be a 6 up save required. He's got a 3 up save normally. Fails to save. Disgustingly resilient there. Well, let's roll for the damage first. That is only 1 damage. How disappointing that is. 
and disgustingly resilient. He makes that save anyway, so he's still on six wounds at the end of that, and he gets to attack back now. He's attacking back, gets three attacks in total, so I've got my three dice ready. With his gnashing jaws, he's going to be hitting on fours. Just one hit. He's going to be wounding on, they are toughness five, so he's going to be wounding on threes. He wounds, and it's a minus two AP, so it's going to require a five up save from the aggressor. Fails a save there, one of the aggressors. Uh, it's only a single damage weapon. So, uh, one of those aggressors takes a wound. I'll put it on the guy that's not the sergeant. And that's the end of the turn. I will move on. Um, was the aggressor lost in this turn? He was lost in lost in the Death Guard turn, wasn't he? Um, so I should have really rolled morale test, but he couldn't fail the morale anyway. Uh, so I'll move on to Death Guard turn two now. One thing to note before I move, move on to turn two, though, is the end of, at the end of turn one, the Death Guard have managed to gain a victory point um, by holding this objective here. And the Space Marines, stupidly, have all ran away from their objective, so they've not gained a victory point. Uh, I completely forgot to try and hold the objective. I was more concerned with trying to take out the Blight Hauler. Uh, I'll need to po possibly move back over here at some point um, or just uh, make some kind of Hail Mary play and try and get down the other end of the battlefield to get three in a turn. Uh, so yeah, one victory point for the Death Guard and it's no victory points for the Space Marines. Just uh, one thing to note about the fight phase as well. A couple of rules that I missed but I've just noticed them on the Mephitic Blight Hauler's data sheet. He gets a Demonic Inborn save so on a five up he uh, makes a save so he would have gotten that when his armor save was negated. Um, and the other one is that he has a foul stench, so uh, you subtract one from hit rolls in the fight phase. So it's even harder for the aggressors to hit. They're only going to be hitting on fives. So I'll need to remember that for this turn. At the end of the Death Guard movement phase in turn two, uh, the Pox, the, not the Poxwalkers, the Plague Marines have moved from here to here. Uh, the Poxwalkers stayed exactly where they were. Mephitic Blight Holder stayed locked in combat. These Plague Marines now are going to target that Librarian with some shooting and see if they can't uh, whittle down his wound count of five. I've decided to do the dice rolls on camera for this one because if they can take out the Librarian, it's going to be a massive boom for them. Uh, the Blight Launchers, first of all, are going to target the Librarian. The four dice are going to be hitting on threes. Two misses there. Uh, they are going to be wounding on threes also. One failed to wound, but you re-roll for a Blight Launcher when it's on a 1. Uh, it fails anyway. Um, so that's just one wound. And it's going to be D3 damage. But we'll try the armor save first. 5 up for the Librarian. Fails that save. D3 damage. It's 2 damage, so it loses 2 wounds already. Uh, let's grab a dice and use that as a wound marker. So he was on 5 wounds, now he's on 3 wounds. This could be a disastrous turn for the Librarian. Um, now, on to the next weapon. I'm going to do the Plasma Gun. And I'm going to supercharge the... Mm, should I supercharge the Plasma Gun? No, I'm not going to supercharge the Plasma Gun. I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. I'm not going to supercharge it. But it's going to be hitting on threes anyway. It hits with two of them. It's going to be wounding on... I've forgotten the strength of the Plasma Gun. Strength 7, uh, it would have been strength 8 and it would have wounded on 2s, but now it's going to be wounded on 3s. 2 wounds anyway, um, and it's going to be 6 up saves, uh, plus 1 though for the ammo, ammo crate is stood behind, uh, so it's going to be 5 up saves there. Oh, one six is made and one is failed. It's going to be just 1 damage because I didn't supercharge like I should have. Um, so it's down to two wounds now on the Librarian. Uh, finally, the two bolt guns at the front are going to shoot. And they are within rapid fire range because you can shoot rapid fire at over 18 inches with the Plague Marines. Um, so it's going to be four shots hitting on threes. One miss. Going to be wounding on threes. No, four, sorry. Uh, just one wound. It's going to be a two-up save because he's stood behind the crane. He makes that save anyway. Should have rolled the white dice. Need to remember that. Um, so he's on two wounds now. And uh, yeah, let's crack on with the rest of the turn. I will come back 
Mm. Do they want to charge at all? They could charge into this combat, try and help out the Mephitic Blight Hauler. Yeah, these, uh, these guys are going to charge into that. It's a five inch charge in total. So let's see if they can make it. Oh, they failed to make that charge. It's only four inches they get, so they stay where they are. Uh, onto the fight phase now on the Mephitic Blight Hauler. It's going to get three attacks with the Gnashing Jaws. And they are going to be hitting on fours. All hit. Really, really good hit rolls here from the Mephitic Black Hollow for these past two turns. Uh, they're going to be wounded on four threes as well. Uh, just one fail to wound there. And it's a minus two to the armor save of the aggressors there. So it's going to be four up, uh, five up armor saves rather. Uh, one made, one fail. So that is a dead aggressor. My word, they are really struggling in this battle, the Imperial Fists. Um, but the aggressor will get to attack back, now the remaining aggressor. And because it's not been the Imperial Fist psychic phase yet, he gets to attack uh, four times instead of his standard three because that psychic power that the Librarian cast on him is still in effect. It's going to be... Oh, I've got two dice in there already. It's going to be hitting on uh, fives because of the rule foul stench gives you a minus one to your hit rolls and of course the gauntlets give you minus one to your hit rolls so hitting on fives two hits so that's pretty decent and they are going to be wounding on threes one wound it's going to be d3 damage two damage so uh, disgustingly oh, he gets his invulnerable save first of course um, you only get one saving throw, don't you? It's D3 damage and one saving throw. Invulnerable save of five up. Fails it. Disgustingly resilient. Makes it. So, he doesn't lose any wounds. And we'll continue on to the Imperial Fist's turn now. After Imperial Fist movement, this is what the battlefield looks like. Of course, the aggressors did lose another man there. But, like I said, there's no need to roll a morale test because they couldn't fail it. Um, the aggressors lost a man, um, but the intercessors now moved on top of the container. Remember, the containers have got storm bolters. I mentioned it in the last mission. I've not actually got them modelled on the containers, but they've got storm bolters, so he can use that storm bolter now if he wants to. He's also within three inches of measure of the objective, so provided uh, nothing from the Death Guard side, I don't see how they would, but nothing from the Death Guard side gets close, they will get a victory point at the end of this turn. Um, the Primaris Librarian moved from here to here uh, and he's going to get in and charge into that Mephitic Light Hollow, try and help out that aggressor a little bit there. Uh, but first, it's onto the Psychic phase. He is going to cast Smite on the Mephitic Light Hauler. It's a warp charge value of 5. Oh, it's 11. Absolutely quality because um, if you roll on Smite, if you roll. Uh, with a roll of 10 or more, I've, you know, stumbling over my words here, you get D6 mortal wounds instead of D3. Says it just here. D6 mortal wounds instead of D3. Um, so that's a fantastic roll for him, and it's not Perils of the Warp, because... Um, it's not Perils of the Warp, because... What's the reason? Uh, because it's not a double six. It's a five and a six. So it's a really good roll for him. So it's going to be D6 mortal wounds... Five is the, or three rather, not five, I'm just making that up. Three mortal wounds caused, but of course he does get disgustingly resilient. I don't remember if mortal wounds can take, you can take in vulnerable saves against him. I don't think you can. But disgustingly resilient anyway, three of them. Five or more now. One made, yeah just one made, and two failed. So he's down to four wounds now, the Blight Hauler. So that really helps out. The um, the aggressor there potentially, and he's going to cast Might of Heroes on himself this time instead of on the aggressor. Um, let me see, strength four, so he's going to be wounding on fives, or should he just let the aggressor take it again? No, he's going to cast Might of Heroes on the aggressor again. Um, he needs a roll of six or more to get this psychic power off. That is a nine, so he gets it off perfectly. And yes, yeah, so that means the aggressor gets an extra attack, he fights first in combat and so on and so forth. Um, actually, he should have fought first in combat 
in the last turn. I don't know why I'm moving him there. I'm getting confused here because I'm just waffling. He should have fought first in combat in the last Death Guard turn as well. Forgot about that, but didn't make much difference. Um, and this guy is now going to charge into the Mephitic Blight Hauler. He can't fail that charge, I don't think. But I'll just roll anyway. Yeah, it's a seven inch charge, so he gets in. And the Mephitic Blight Hauler is already locked in combat, so doesn't get to fire Overwatch. And now there's going to be two lots of attacks going into that Mephitic Blight Hauler. One thing I've forgotten, I've just remembered, is the shooting phase. So, what I'm going to do is. I'm not going to do the shooting phase this time. Um, I am going to leave it because I've forgotten it. I need to teach myself a lesson there. So it's straight onto the combat phase. And the aggressor will fight first. He's going to be hitting. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is pop that down. Right, so the aggressor is going to be hitting on fives. With four attacks in total. He's going to be hitting a blight horror on fives. Two hits. Decent roll in there, and he's going to be wounding on threes. Two wounds, excellent stuff for the aggressor and the imperial fists. Uh, so he's wounded twice there. Uh, it's d3 damage on the gauntlets, and it is a minus three to the save as well. So it's going to be the invulnerable save for the uh, for the Mephitic Blight Hollow of five up. Made one, failed one, so he needs to roll a Disgust and Resilient at five up as well. Fails that as well, so it's going to be D3 damage. It's three damage, so he's down to one wound now. His final wound, the Blight Hauler. And then the Primaris Librarian is going to attack as well, because he charged this turn. The Librarian gets four attacks in total, and he's going to be hitting on three. He's just gathering my dice. Or fours, rather, because of the... Uh, Foul stench. So he gets two hits anyway. And he's going to be wounding on fives. One wound. That is all he needs potentially. The power sword of course. Um, has. Or the four sword rather. Has a AP characteristic of minus three. So it's going to be a, dis uh, a demonic save of five up. Fails it. It's going to be D3 damage. Uh, so it's going to be 2 damage. And a Disgusting and Resilient. Fails that as well. So he does lose his last wound, the Mephitic Blight Hauler. Meaning there's a Putrid Explosion. What does that mean though? The put put Putrid Explosion rule states... Uh, if a Mephitic Blight Hauler loses its last wound, roll a dice before removing the model from the battlefield. On a 4+, plus, it explodes... And each enemy unit, or each unit rather, within seven inches, suffers one mortal wound. So, let's see. On a four plus, it'll explode. It doesn't explode. How disappointing that is for the Death Guard. But the Mephitic Black Hole is dead, meaning there's a victory point there for the Imperial Fists after this turn. Which is exciting stuff for them. The... Remove that wound, and then these guys can consolidate as well. Uh, this guy's going to go here. And this guy's going to go here. There we go. Uh, so that's the end of the turn, and totting up the victory points. One victory point for the... or One victory point for killing the Mephitic Bite Hauler. One victory point for being within three inches of the objective. These guys get one victory point as well. So it's now 2-2 two, two victory point wise. So the Imperial Fists have caught up already. Not bad going, if you ask me. And it's on to Death Guard, turn three now. So this is what the battlefield looks like after the Death Guard movement. Uh, the Plague Marines moved back. Um, they want to try and take out this aggressor before he targets the Pox Walkers. So, uh, I move back and I'm going to target the aggressor with the Blight Launcher guys, getting four shots and they'll be hitting on threes. That is three hits. They're going to be wounding on threes also. Uh, we roll in ones. So that is three wounds. Nice. Um, and it's going to be five up saves for the aggressor. All three failed, so that is a dead aggressor. And that is another victory point for the Death Guard. So what I'm going to do is give them another victory point there. 
And then the uh, they're splitting fire. I was only targeting the aggressor with... I should have declared that at the start, of course, but uh, I had it in my head, and obviously I've not got an opponent, so I, I forgot to say it. Um, but yeah, they're splitting fire. The plasma gun and the bolt gun guys are going to target the librarian, who is only on two wounds, if you remember. I forgot to move his uh, wound marker there. Um, so the plasma gun guy is going to target him first off, and he's not going to supercharge, but he's going to hit on... He's going to hit on threes. That's a drop dice. Oh, I should have let that drop dice go, shouldn't I? Um, so he's going to wound on... Uh, what's he going to wound on? Seven. He's going to wound on threes. Wounds. And it's a six-up save for the librarian. Fails that. So he's down to one wound now. And the... These two fellas here, uh, just thinking, just thinking, could one of them throw a grenade? No, I'm just going to target him with the bolt guns. Uh, it's going to be four shots in total, hitting on threes. That is three hits. Going to be wounding on fours. Two wounds. It's going to be three up saves for the librarian. One failed and one made. So that is a dead librarian. Oh my word. Another victory point goes to the Death Guard. So they're on four victory points now. If I can find the four on this dice, that'll be a miracle. Four victory points so far to the Death Guard and two to the Imperial Fist. I don't think the Imperial Fist are going to bring this back somehow. Do you? Um, right, so yeah, let's get rid of that dice now and... Let's move on to Death Guard, uh, to Imperial Fist turn 3, I suppose. So, Imperial Fist turn 3, we only have the Sergeant left. Um, he's just going to start taking pot shots at these guys, I suppose. Uh, with the Storm Bolter, he's going to get four shots. Oh, actually, no, they're not within half range, are they? So, he might as well shoot with his. Uh, is that 15 inches? Yeah, it's within 15 inches, um, so he's going to shoot with his bolt rifle instead because he gets uh, multi he gets two shots with his bolt rifle, and the bolt, ri bolt rifle is slightly better stat line wise because uh, it's got the minus AP, minus one AP. So he's going to hit on threes. Oh, just one hit, bad news. He's going to wound on fives, fails to wound anyway. Um, yeah, that's the end of the Imperial Fist turn. It's not looking particularly good if you ask me. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, move on to Death Guard, turn 4. Now, there's no psychic phase or anything like that. But Death Guard turn 4 is what we have next. After the turn 3, we have 5 victory points in total for the Death Guard and 3 for the Imperial Fists, based on the, uh, holding the objectives, their own objectives. Now, the Death Guard are going to target... Uh, they've moved up here from over here. They're going to target the Space Marine on top of the container there. I don't think uh, I've actually shot into these Plague Marines, have I? Maybe I did in the first turn. I can't remember exactly. Um, oh, as well as him in the last turn, actually, thinking about it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to start with... <laughs> I'm going to start with the pla uh, with the Blight Launchers. They're going to be hitting on threes. Oh, my word. That's some not so great rolling all of a sudden they're going to be wounding though on threes that's two wounds it's a five up save makes both of them oh he's an absolute hero five up save makes both of them with fives um so let's move now onto the plasma gun should i supercharge it just for fun i'm going to supercharge it he's going to be hitting on threes and on a one he dies Oh yes, he gets two hits. He's going to be wounding on twos now because it's doubled the target's toughness. Wounds, and it's going to be two damage or D3 damage per shot. Let me check that. Yes, yeah, two damage per shot. So now this gentleman on top of the container needs two six-up saves or he is blasted into nothingness. Two six-ups. Oh no, he gets a three and whatever that was, but it's not going to save him because it's a two damage weapon. We're saying a one now. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's the end of the final Imperial Fist model on the battlefield. The Death Guard gets another victory point. 
And come the end of the turn, they get another victory point, and the Space Marines are getting on. So it's like 7 3. It's 6 3 or 7 3. But basically, they wiped out the Imperial Fists. So the Death Guard are victorious this time. There we have it, guys. A Death Guard victory, finally. Uh, I say finally, I think they won two weeks ago as well, but a Death Guard victory nonetheless. Um, yeah, it was the Mephitic Light Hollow was just way too strong a unit for the Space Marines to deal with. He was just taking out models left, right and centre at the start there, and then even in combat it's a decent model. Uh, you'd think a vehicle model wouldn't be that good in combat. Um, one thing to note though, I was tallying the victory points slightly wrong. I was given each side a victory point for every turn they held an objective, but the mission is actually, you're supposed to give the victory points at the end of the mission. So in the final turn, if you hold the objective, you gain that victory point. So the victory point total would have been slightly different. The Space Marines would have gained uh, one victory point for killing the Mephitic Black Hauler, and the Death Guard would have had four victory points. However, you could argue the Death Guard would have seven victory points because had the game gone on for one more turn, it was supposed to be five, maximum five battle rounds, had the game gone on for one more turn, the Poxwalkers may well, with a good advance roll, have gotten to the secure the Space Marines objective as well. But they wiped out the Space Marines anyway, so they got three victory points for each unit they took out, and they got the one victory point for the objective they held. So it was 4-1 or 7-1, depending on which way you want to... Uh, which way you want to say it went. I know in some tournaments they do that where if you've got enough turns to get a unit to an objective, they'll give you those victory points as well. But that's tournament play. And at the end of the day, it's a Death Guard victory. That's all we need to know in this. So it doesn't really matter in this instance uh, how how big a victory it was. But it was pretty substantial, I'd say. The the Mephitic Black Hole, I, I think, I just as the Imperial Fist player, I just put too much attention on the Mephitic Black Hole. I should have maybe realised it was going to be too tough to whittle down that unit and attack the other units first. Um, but, having said that, if I'd ignored it, the, it probably would have just attacked all of my key units anyway. Uh, it attacked all of the Imperial Fist key units anyway. Yeah, so uh, that's it for this week in the Conquest Tutorial Mission. It's been a really, I really enjoyed this mission. Uh, it's good, so it's going to be interesting to see what we do next week in next week's mission. Before you go, don't forget to give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Any questions you've got, you can ask in the comments below. There's a button here for you to subscribe if you've not already done so, and a Patreon link here if you'd like to support the channel. There's also a couple of videos here for you to check out at your leisure. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the battlefield.